Hello, my name is Cyril and I want to explain you today what gradient descent is. So gradient descent is a technique that you can use in order to minimize a function. So consider you have a function f, you want to find the parameter x so that f of x gets as small as possible. The question is how should you choose x? Gradient descent is a technique which does this in an iterative manner. So it starts with some value for x and then says how should I change x so that the f of x gets smaller and smaller and smaller over time. It basically iterates this process. So the key question is what is the right direction in which I should change x? And here the gradient plays an important role. Because the gradient of a function basically gives us the direction of the steepest uphill movement that I need to do. So how can I maximize that function if I move in this direction? So what we do is we just walk in the direction of the negative gradient because this is the steepest downhill direction that we can actually take. So consider an analogy from the real world. So let's say I place you somewhere in the mountains, let's say the Alps, and the shape of the mountains are, represent the function that you want to minimize. Now it's very foggy, you don't really know, you can't see very far, but you actually want to walk into the next valley. In which direction should you go? So just look into your local surrounding and say, okay, where's the steepest downhill direction? And I will actually move in this downhill direction and repeat this process over and over again. And this is kind of the real world analogy that, that you, what you can do in the mountains is actually what um, gradient descent does when minimizing a function from a mathematical point of view. So for example, we have this 1D function over here. We have a position we want to find. We have a current a parameter vector and the question is how should I change this parameter vector so that in the end I find the minimum of the function f. And what I can do is I can compute the gradient and in 1D it's sufficient to just look if the gradient is positive or negative because this tells me if I should move left or right. And so just by kind of looking in which direction to go in the positive x direction or negative um, x direction I can actually minimize this function. We can also do this for slightly more complex functions, um, but what becomes obvious here is depending on the starting point, I may end up at a different uh, location, at a different minimum. Um, we can do these things not only in 1D, we can also do this in multiple dimensions. For example, in 2D, then we have a kind of a 2D function and the gradient direction is now a, a direction vector, um, and, but we can follow the negative direction vector and also minimize this function. In the end, it boils down to an update rule which says our new parameter at um, iteration j plus 1 is our previous parameter minus a small value called a learning rate, lambda, times the gradient evaluated in the current parameter configuration. And just see lambda is a very small value which basically tells you how large your steps are that you're taking. And with this, we can actually minimize a function. In practice, we are not using gradient descent in its basic form. We often use stochastic gradient descent, but we only do this for matters of efficiency. So instead of computing the exact gradient, we just compute an approximation of the gradient because this is typically the most uh, time-consuming action that we are doing in this process. So if you consider that the loss function or the function you want to minimize, your objective function, is in, for a lot of problems not a single monolithic function, it actually is a sum of a lot of small functions. And so the question is, do we need all components of that sum in order to compute the gradient? And the assumption is, no, we don't. We can just subsample a small number of those. So instead of, let's say, having one million elements of which I need to sum, I just take 1,000 random ones, compute the gradient over this small set of um, loss functions, and then sum them up and walk into that gradient direction. So we may take steps which not always go into the right direction, but they are roughly the right direction. So I may take a few steps more, but I will end up at the minimum. And if computing each step is so much faster, it makes actually sense to take this approach. In our mountain analogy, this is basically just a drunk person walking down into the next valley. So taking a few steps which are a little bit off, but overall will probably go into the right direction. And that's basically what gradient descent and stochastic gradient descent are about. There are variants and extensions of that on how to choose a learning rate or how to update your parameters precisely. A popular variant is Adam, adaptive um, moment estimation, for example, that you can do. But overall, it's the same idea which sits behind this minimization. I hope that was useful and you get an idea how you can minimize a function with gradient descent. And it's basically just walking in towards the downhill direction 
um, and iteratively minimizing the function value so that you end up in a local, unfortunately not a global minimum. Thank you.